Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Actually Diet Art by Science, and today we are going to continue on with our discussion of how to pick out a fleece. In the first video, I talked about how to pick out a fleece uh, and when you're face to face with a vendor, and also how to do it when you are doing it virtually, like I sometimes have to. It's hard to get fleeces here in Korea, so you know, trust me, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to show you again how uh, the fleece looks after you've bought and brought home the fleece. When you get a, a, a fresh fleece, it's going to be shorn off the animal, the tips are going to be folded in on itself, and then it's probably going to be rolled up so that the shorn side is facing out. When you get home, what you're going to do is you want to unroll that and lay it flat so that the tip side is facing up. This is my wash fleece, so it's not going to quite look like what you have. But basically, you'll have oh, you'll have uh, up here. This this is representing the head and shoulder of the wool. The two protrusions right there and right there are kind of representing what the top part of the foreleg wool would look like if you laid it out. Then this part here, uh, this is sort of like the body. And then over here at the end, um, we have what's supposed to indicate the hind legs and a little bit of the, the wool that would be around the butt. So when you unroll your fleece, it should generally have the shape um, of the animal itself. If you have a good spinner's fleece, so, you, so the, the farm, they've gone through the extra effort to remove all of the undesirable pieces for spinning, and you'll get in the end uh, a fleece that you're paying for just the parts that you are going to spin. It's going to be a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to do all of that extra skirting because they've done it for you. Um, so you're buying exactly the fleece that you're probably going to be using uh, for all of your uh, projects. So that makes it a little bit easier. But if you aren't buying a fleece from someone who has specifically skirted it for hand spinners, and this happens pretty regularly, um, these extra little pieces are going to be there. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to pick these pieces off, and this is based on my personal experience and some of the things that I've read. I'm not a professional shepherdess. <laughs> so what I'm saying might, might contradict a little bit from what they might say, but generally speaking, these are some uh, rules to follow. If you if you have a, a fleece that is a hand spinner's fleece, uh, really all you have to worry about is separating the prime from the not prime. If you have a fleece that isn't, you're going to have to worry about separating the prime from the not prime from the not even worth spinning fleece. Hopefully you've picked a fleece that doesn't have any um, really gross pieces, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that part you don't even have to worry about. So I won't even go there. So the prime part of the fleece, generally speaking on a sheep, it's going to be the part of the fleece that is on either side of the body of the sheep. So that's from the shoulder in the front to the hind leg in the back from the belly up to just like from the top of the belly up to uh, the top of the fleece or <laughs> the top of uh, the back so we're not talking about the the whole underside of the sheep that's belly wool and usually that's either thrown away or um, if it's particularly clean um, you know sometimes that's used for like fiber filling but generally not for spinning. Um, and then the part in the middle of the back where a lot of debris can accumulate, uh, food, you know, rainwater, if it's, you know, if it's not a coated sheep, that, that wool tends to be not as good as the sheep's wool on the sides. So generally speaking, that is considered the prime, the stuff that's on the sides. So if you're looking at my example here, that's the wool that is uh, represented right in this area here. So basically, when you're looking at your fleece, you can kind of see the shape. It's going to come in a little bit from the leg part, 
and that's going to be the big block that will be uh, just the prime fleece. Be sure that the stuff that's in the middle, and you'll be able to tell, I've been able to tell this on every single fleece except for this one because it's washed, um, where the center of, where the center back of that sheep was because it's just dirty. It's really gross. So take that wool out. Don't throw it away because it's still good. Maybe not for all of those prime luxury things that you're planning to make, um, but it's definitely good for something. So don't throw that away. Just take that part out and make it separate. And then you take the prime fleece and roll that up. You can either wash that or you can save it for later. Um, like I mentioned in a different video, uh, fleece storage, the fleece storage video. Um, if you aren't planning to wash the fleece right away, this is an important step now so that all of this information is in the forefront of your mind so that you have the prime fleece already sectioned off so you don't have to go through the effort like a year from now unrolling it, seeing that it kind of like shifted somehow, or like maybe the lanolin stuck together, so it's kind of like a little bit of a mess pulling it apart. So by doing it now, you don't have to worry about it in the future. You can just wash and do whatever you want with it. So you've got the prime fleece taken out. Now, if you have a hand spinner's fleece, essentially everything else is going to be sort of like the seconds. This is the stuff that isn't as soft, it isn't as pure white as the rest of the fleece is for the prime. So, you know, maybe this is going to be stuff that you're going to dye. Maybe this is going to be blended with something else. Or, um, you know, it would make really, really great felting wool. Or you could use it for spinning, um, you know, other things like socks or hats or something. Um, and if you don't have a hand spinner's fleece, if it's just a fleece from someone who maybe is just getting into it or they haven't skirted it heavily um, before selling it, um, you're going to have to make another division. So let's look at our example again. So the parts here that are, represent the shoulder, oh, I'm not getting it, there we go. This part that which represents uh, the shoulder and the top of the leg, what you're going to want to do is look for the pieces that kind of look tired. You know, the, the crimp or the curl just really isn't holding very tight. Separate that from the locks that look like they're still pretty springy, that look like the rest of the fleece, more or less. You want to separate those two. The stuff that looks more like the prime is considered the second, and the stuff that doesn't look like the rest of the fleece, that's going to be probably more suited for felting or fiber fill or, you know, other kinds of crafts in the future. Um, so I want to make that separation as well. Generally, uh, this is the stuff that's going to be at the, at the bottom part of the leg. Uh, front legs and back legs, the part that kind of goes around the butt. If that hasn't been skirted off completely, uh, there might be a little bit of good wool there that you can use for felting. Depends sometimes on the animal, sometimes on uh, the shepherd or whatever. Um, and then the part of the wool like up by the head depends on um, the type of sheep. If there's obviously, you know, if you're, if we're talking about Cheviot, they, or Cheviot, which I took French, I want to say Cheviot, but apparently it's Cheviot, whatever. So they don't, they don't have head wool. It's just they have those cute little bunny ears, and um, the stuff that grows on their head is really short, so that part doesn't get shorn. So in some sheep breeds, you won't actually get uh, head wool. So that you won't even have to worry about. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we've separated the prime from the second, and then everything else from the second if there is anything else um, and like I said when you're when you buy a whole fleece it's better to do this step now rather than wait because there might be an issue with the lanolin and getting in the way it happens um, and then everything is ready to go for whatever project let's say um, winter is coming and um, you want to gear up to start making socks Maybe you're going to use the second, the second for that, and that's fine. You can use, you can uh, have that washed and ready to go and spun up into socks while the other parts of the fleece are just chilling in their bags, 
with the labels you know and whatever project ideas you might have in store from them for them anyway so generally speaking uh, this is how I go about choosing a fleece and picking out the best places for X or for Y um, but you know it's also a generality if you want to know more about how to specifically look for locks for this or locks for that then I would suggest heading to um, a website that specializes it specializes in it and I can offer a link or two below in the description um, if you want more specific information I can find books for you and uh, tell you or lead you to the blogs and such that I've read from shepherds and shepherdesses um, which have helped give me insight for how to process a fleece so or actually not process we're just we're just picking out the pieces we haven't even gone to the processing part <laughs> so um, if you found this video useful uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have any questions or comments you can post them below or send me an email uh, if you want you can check out my Etsy site got some good stuff there and you can find deals and other updates on Facebook and Twitter which again those links are listed below and I'm also starting a new blog so that link will be listed below as well and there I'm going to have other tips and tutorials available better pictures um, probably more information about what I'm talking about in this video is to sort of help those who may not understand exactly what I'm talking about which is totally fine and um, you know also post things like what I'm currently working on I've got so many hands in the pot right now. I've got tons of things started and I need to finish some of them. So it'll be a good motivation for me to finish it. Anyway, so thanks for watching. Bye.